Hello everyone, Anthus here, and today we're going to ramble about Machinist a little bit, which is something I've been wanting to do for the longest time uh, since Heaven's Ward came out. Now, I've got a mechanical engineer with me here, Daniel, and I've been wanting to talk to him for the longest time because the the background of the Machinist in, in Heaven's Ward is basically that we've got a mechanical engineer that's taken it upon himself to design uh, means and methods for combating the Dravanian Horde, which is a little bit more sophisticated and forward-thinking than the past thousand years of trying to poke them in the eye. And I thought that it might be interesting to get an approach from a real mechanical engineer regarding how they might approach uh, some sort of patches and fixes for the machinists. So, how's it going? How are we doing? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's in the morning, so I'm a bit <laughs> brain loose, but going all right, thank you. I'm brainless every time I record. Everyone will tell you that I'm always so fucking scattered. Oh my god. Um, the magic of editing. Yes. Um, so, you've come out of the University of Ishgard with a degree in mechanical engineering. Prestigious. Yes, it's very prestigious. It's, um, it's, it's one of those like private Catholic universities. Oh, wow. Okay. So, it's, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. You need to be like friends with the Pope. Um, You've come out with a mechanical engineering degree and... Specializing in dragon fighting? Well, no, not, not at all, because this wasn't even a thing, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of months ago. So the plebs in this society have some engineering know-how, but fighting dragons is something that's only for the noble knights. I see. Yeah. And this bloke wants to basically develop a guild and, and educate people um, so that you can kind of mobilize the... The masses against the dragons. Sure. Um, so you walk straight out of the university gates and a dragon attacks you. What do you do? What kind of dragon is it? Do I have a way of identifying? It's just it a is? just an average fire breathing dragon, let's say twenty feet long. Um, and what you've got with you is basically what what you've been uh, carrying around between labs and and stuff like that. Sure. Well, if I'm on the university grounds, um, as part of my job on the grounds, I get to use liquid nitrogen a lot. So I'd happen to have some with me and some arrows, because of course you have to do archery while you're at university. You have to do archery. While yeah. So I, I would uh, wrap a rag around the arrow, dunk it in the liquid nitrogen, so it's nice and frozen, and shoot the dragon with it. And how does that work? Well, there's this thing called the ductile to brittle transition that most materials have, and basically, if you cool stuff down a lot, it gets very fragile. Think of the Titanic. It was in icy cold waters, so it was very pr fragile, like a china plate. Hit something and it shatters. So you cool the dragon's scales down, right, and then hit it with a crossbow. Okay. Shatter the scales, get through to its weak, fleshy underbelly, okay. and you've got a chance. All right. And, and what do you do then? Well, at that stage, I'd probably try and hit it with a flaming arrow at the, at the point I just weakened because, see, dragons breathe fire, but surely they can't have a belly full of fire. I mean, otherwise they'd kind of... It'd be like if you had really, really hot Mexican food. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be nice. So they must have some kind of flammable liquid or gas inside them which they ignite <laughs> when they breathe out. So if you can get into the belly where they're holding this flammable substance, hit it mm. with a flaming arrow, you've got a fireworks show. <laughs> so basically you'd explode the dragon. Yeah, exactly. So you think that the, the black mage might actually be better equipped for this kind of thing because they use like frost spells and then fire spells and stuff like that? Yeah, they could certainly be a, a good ally with the instruction of the engineer telling him exactly what to do and when to do it. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think of the, the handgun as a weapon of choice for, for the machinist? Could be useful. I mean, I, I don't know a lot about uh, the exact properties of dragon scale, but if you had a high caliber handgun, you got a pretty decent chance of going through most things we're looking at sort of uh victorian age it's basically victorian age with um any any exclusions that you can make through the use of fantasy jargon sure okay so your handgun's basically like a musket which can have yeah. magic yeah all right so thunder gun no uh, i'd imagine that it wouldn't be hugely useful against dragon scale because they're supposed to be fairly sturdy armor mm -hmm. you might be able to uh cause some kind of concussion or uh uh, blunt object damage kind of thing, but I'd imagine using a sh uh, cold would be your best friend. Okay. So try, trying to make things shatter. Using the thunder gun after you've cooled it down mm -hmm. would be very useful because you've got that hard impact. So the um, 
The Machinist does actually use different bullets with different kinds of effects and stuff. Sure. And you're talking about liquid nitrogen. So I guess we could get, um, uh, we got ice crystals, which basically have the similar properties. They do exactly what they sound like. Yep. So maybe you'd fashion a bullet out of an ice crystal and then hit it with something hard and concussive to shatter the scales. Yeah. I mean, probably a, a lot of ice bullets would be really useful. All right. Because... Um, to be honest, the most effective way to cool something down isn't to hit it with something cold. If I throw an ice cube with you, at you, you're not going to be very cold. If I cover you head to toe in ice for a sustained period of time, you'll be very cold. So if I can use something that I either have a repeat volley of ice bullets mm. or have some, like, use your ma your Black Mage, I mm -hmm. believe you said it was called, and use one of his spells to freeze the thing. That'd be a lot more useful. And then use the Thunder Gun to... Um, shoot something heavy and hard at it to shatter the scales. Okay. Yeah. So we've been looking at, uh, I guess, ways that you'd sort of confront a dragon face-to-face, uh, 1v1. One -one. Mm -hmm. What we're really talking about, the situation here, is that this city is under siege by dragons, and we have literally thousands of dragons of all different shapes and sizes uh, coming at a point. How How is one dude going to handle that with some mechanical engineering background do we have anything in the society that could vaguely resemble an air compressor an air compressor oh i suppose so you can compress air yeah build a for want of a better term giant potato cannon <laughs> yes giant and, potato cannon <laughs> and fill the thing full of liquid nitrogen or some <laughs> other cold substance okay fill it full of ice crystals yep and just indiscriminately spray Okay. And I'm talking a giant potato cannon here, big enough to take down a swarm of dragons and just cover the sky with cold stuff. Meanwhile, you have a platoon of, say, archers or mages or something else that can uh, deal blunt force damage. Right. And hammer the frozen dragons with it. So we actually have... Um, I'm going to try to throw up an image now. But we actually have around the place um, these sort of... Yeah, you see that on there? Oh, yes. Yeah, yep. things like that. And, yep. and you can see it's basically supposed to be like a giant uh, crossbow. Sure. Um, I, I guess like the black arrow kind of thing. Yeah, from the of rings. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so you'd basically fashion that <coughs> Excuse me. to fire a spray of, of ice crystals is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then use other versions of that even to hit the frozen dragons to shatter them. Okay. And then use other versions of that with flaming arrows to hit the shattered dragons. Okay. So you've got a three-stage attack. Okay. So you think that we'd be better off sitting tight here in Ishgard rather than going out hunting dragons? Well, you could hunt dragons, but you'd want to try and do that on a one-to-one -one kind of basis. If you, mm. if you were ambushed out in the open with just one engineer mm -hmm. and a lot of dragons mm -hmm. you'd want to be a pretty resourceful engineer to get out of there <laughs> and how would you get out of there tough question um see engineers are known for perhaps more of their intellectual abilities than their athletic abilities so i'd imagine you'd create some form of a distraction build a contraption uh macgyver style which would draw the uh, dragons away from you and then uh, leg it <laughs> like that yeah, I'd do it. Yeah, yeah, little 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 whirring bot there you've got there. Yeah, you, you use, <laughs> use him to kind of clap trap the um the dragons, just annoy them. And meanwhile, you check a fast one on the you other like direction. It. Yeah, <laughs> play rinse wind. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're kind of assuming that dragons are kind of stupid there. So I think I think what we're suggesting is basically if you get caught with your pants down by a couple of hundred dragons, you're fucked. Um, Seems quite reasonable. Yeah, but I suppose that's true of pretty much anyone in this universe. Yeah. Um, now what about dragons that don't breathe fire? We've got, uh, ice breathing dragons, dragons that sort of breathe clouds of frost. Would they be, uh, would they not be impervious to that method of cooling? I think your ice breathing dragons would be just as susceptible as your fire breathing dragons. Why um, is that? I imagine they'd work on some form of a vapor compression cycle, a re refrigeration cycle, or air conditioning cycle. Um, Basically, they would have some form of heat transfer fluid within them, okay. which would be drawing heat away from the outside. Right. Or drawing heat, sorry, drawing heat towards the outside to create a, uh, a cool inside the dragon, which then they would breathe out. So basically, you can move heat around, you can't create and destroy it, it's energy. But with the right fluids and the right kind of cycles, you can move heat from one place to another place and make certain areas very, very cold. 
Right. So I think that's what the dragon's be doing. Now, the thing about most of these heat transfer fluids is they're extremely flammable. Okay, so you just need to identify the organ where it's keeping the fluids. Exactly. And, and hit it the same way. Yep. <laughs> what about a um what about a dragon that doesn't have any sort of breath but just has very sort of poisonous saliva or something like that? So basically like a giant flying uh what do you what do you call those really awful lizards in like uh Komodo dragons? Komodo dragons. Sure, yes. okay. So some kind of bacterial yeah. saliva or something like that. Uh do they have a range attack? Can they, they get can spit from distance? They can spit. How far could they spit? Um, about as far as you could shoot an arrow, I suppose. So pretty far, but not super accurately. Not as far as you could shoot one of those giant uh, black arrow things you've got on the battlements. Not as far as you could shoot one of those. No, I doubt it. <laughs> okay, could you uh, possibly, or you, you could uh, retrofit them to shoot a, a giant net uh, weighted with cannonballs instead, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. So I reckon you'd, you'd hit one of them at your dragon, tie him down. Um, and then while he's struggling on the ground, unable to move, you'd get a platoon to hit him from behind. Hit him behind with what? Uh, just normal weapons and things. Just, just shank him. Basically just shank him from behind while he's too busy trying to get out of the net which has entangled him. Okay. Because if you hit him from in front, he's going to spit at you and poison you. So you race around from behind while he can't move. Okay. And take him out. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that against, say, your flaming dragon because they burn through the net. Hmm. So one one more scenario with the horde, they they generally attack with a whole bunch of different kinds of dragons in like a very uh, tight group. Sure. Um, and normally among them, there's going to be some sort of you know general or champion, some elder dragon that's just surrounded by thousands of smaller ones. Uh, how would would you be able to deal with them all at once? Is there is there some sort of um, uh, end all strategy to approaching something like that? Yeah. Okay, so uh, one of your black arrow shooters, giant crossbow things, um, mm. have that with the uh, strategy of the liquid nitrogen, as okay. you said before. Yeah. Uh, freeze the whole bunch of them. Yeah. Um, have another few of them retrofitted to contain, say, cannonballs or like uh, like the pirates used to do back in the day where they ran out of carrot balls and just shot uh, cannonballs and just shot like cutlery and spoons and small pirates and things. Small pirates. <laughs> you know, just, just shoot a heap <laughs> of blunt objects in the direction, spray them, so you basically whack them or try and knock out as many scales as you can. Mm. And then, uh, say, get a collective of mages to uh, do the whole Sun Goku thing and lend me your power spirit bomb and just whack them with a <laughs> giant firebomb. <laughs> and that would create a giant explosion. Even if you didn't uh, manage to puncture all the dragons, you'd create mm. enough heat there that you'd probably melt the scales of the rest of them and you'd create a chain reaction and a large explosion. You wouldn't want to be anywhere near them at the time. Hmm. Okay. You'd have bits of dragon going everywhere. Yeah, that sounds like a real mess. Yeah. So, I guess what... What I'm really interested in is, do you think that this class has been adequately designed for for what its intention is? Do you think that the the thing with the with the handgun, with the different kinds of ammo, um, do you think that there could have been a better approach to the the sort of mechanisms of this class? Would you have given them more like fixed turrets and stuff like that? I, I would give them a, a kind of MacGyver ability, a ability to modify existing infrastructure, to redesign existing fixed turrets and things, as okay. well as the uh, equipment they're carrying. I'd also probably give them an ability to make a slightly more kick-ass little robot thing than you just showed me. Yeah, they're a bit sort of underwhelming, aren't they, yeah. little auto turrets. Just to make this clear, everyone, we're not suggesting any uh, sort of game fixes or anything like that. We're, we're talking exclusively from a law standpoint and how it might make more sense or be somehow more um, uh, less underwhelming I suppose anyway do you, do you think uh, do you think that you ever might want to fight some dragons <laughs> do, do you With, feel uh... do you feel like you're qualified I certainly feel that if, if anyone is qualified to know how to take down a dragon, it would be your friendly neighborhood mechanical engineer. Really? Um, yeah, we, we know all about materials, we know, know all about explosions, uh, things like that. So okay. We know how to make things blow up in many different ways. Um, but I wouldn't do it without backup. You wouldn't do it without backup? No. Essentially, I think your engineer in the real world would be the guy with the planned leader kind of working out how to do things. Yeah. And then he'd have his minions to actually carry out the plans. Okay, so if you could have any um, 
uh, any celebrity for your set backup? Any sort of action hero celebrity, who would it be? And why? Jason Segel? Yeah, J J Jason Segel, for one, just so you can watch him say, I'm Jason Segel, and then get his head bitten off or something, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, I'd go with uh, Hugh Jackman, because he could sing him a nice little ditto, a ditty from uh, Boys From Oz, and watch them get really confused. He'd be your distraction when you have to leg it out of the way. Okay. Um, apart from that, I'd go for the Mythbusters. you go for the Mythbusters? <laughs> Because they're, they're, they're some ingenious fellas. <laughs> and and their support crew, the guys up behind the cameras. They're, All they're the, the guys Australian make, guys. Yeah, they're the guys who make the magic happen. Yeah, too yeah. right. All right, well, um, <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for watching that. Look, let, let me know what you think. Try not to take this too seriously, but it's, it's something that I've had kind of a conceptual... Uh, idea of since Heaven's Word came out and I really wanted to sit down and have a chat about. So Daniel, thank you very much for uh, talking to us about mechanical engineering and the utilities of fighting dragons and uh, good luck next time you run into one of those. Thanks for having me on the show.